turn this thing around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. I'm calling on the name that changes everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. All of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. I'm praying God come and turn this thing around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. I'm calling on the name that changes everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Because all of my hope is in the name the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Oh, God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now. All of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, come in the name, the name of Jesus. All of my hope is in the name, is in the name, the name of Jesus. Come, come in the name, come in the name, the name of Jesus. God, turn it around, turn it around. Oh, God, turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. open your Bibles to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. We're coming up uh, closely to the end of what we've been sharing uh, for the last uh, few months actually concerning uh, the armor of God, the spiritual battles that we find ourselves in. And we pray you've been blessed. We pray that you've learned something from it. We pray that uh, we really realize more than ever that we really are um, not by our choice but simply because we're here um, in a battle. You know, the first battle was to keep you from Christ. Well, if you're saved, say amen. amen. Well, the Bible says you won that one, amen. <laughs> Who is he that overcomes the world but he that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Well, the devil failed there, amen. amen. Now, after you're saved, his work is to keep you from growing and maturing in the things of God. And, and even if you're, it doesn't matter if you're saved or not, we're in the middle of a war. 
And Paul begins to highlight this in the book of Ephesians because whether people know the Lord Jesus or not, there's a battle going on for the souls of mankind. And you and I as believers, we're in that war as well. Whether we choose to participate or not, it does not stop. So if it's happening, we may as well do our part. Amen? Amen. So we've been looking over the last um, uh, while here in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. I'll read verse 10, you read verse 11, and we'll alternate. And then we'll pull out what we'll be sharing from on today. If anyone needs a Bible, lift your hands. The ushers will get them to you. Amen. And like was prayed earlier, I'm in agreement that the word of God will not return void. It'll prosper where he sends it. Let's say this together. Lord, Lord. send your word word. into my heart in the name of Jesus. I thank you. Amen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Let's read 18 together. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You know, last week we were sharing from the word of God concerning taking that shield of faith. We we finished that up, amen, and how do you use that to quench the fiery darts of the wicked that come against you. And, um, but today we're going to look at, we call this dress, are you dressed for the battle? And we talked um, from the beginning, we're, we're, we're told here in the word of God to put on the armor of God. Verse 10 tells us, number one, to be strong in the Lord. That's a command. And in the power of his might, that word might is kratio in the Greek, and it means in power to overcome the enemy's resist, to overcome resistance. And so in Christ, we have power in us because why? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So we can overcome resistance. And then we're commanded to put on the whole armor of God. And then we're told uh, the, uh, our enemy, we, we don't wrestle against people of flesh and blood. Um, but against, and against is used four times here, against principalities and powers and the rules of the darkness of this world. These are hosts of demon spirits, and, and so our battles against spirits we do not see. So my enemy we see is not who I see. So we've got to look beyond the people that come against us. We've got to look through the opposition that comes our way, and we've got to address the root call, which is spiritual. And that's why we're given these weapons so we can win these spiritual battles. And then in verse 13, we are told to take unto you the whole armor. And so when we say, are you dressed, are you fully dressed? You know, you can, you know, get partially dressed and run out the house. You ever forgot to put on a certain part, piece of clothing before? And then you get out and then you realize, oh, man, I forgot that. Well, you know, we shouldn't leave spiritually half-dressed. Amen. We need a whole armor of God, don't we? And so you need to know how it operates, what God has given us here in Jesus' name. And so he tells us, put on the whole armor of God so we can withstand in the evil day. Saints, I believe we're in the evil day. Amen. Amen. And so it's a day where so many things that are anti-Christ are coming against us, where so many things are just pushing against the church of God, the people of God against what we know to be right, what we know to be true. Everything around us that we would call um, values or convictions that we have as Christians is under attack today. Even truth is under attack. And so you and I then have to be rightly clothed so we can stand against that. And he said we needed the whole armor of God so we could withstand in the evil day. That day where you come to a turning point in your life where you get tired of being pushed, beat, 
put down. He said, devil, not taking it anymore. I'm standing up on my feet, and I'm going to stand in this day. And then he tells us, having done all, to stand there for. And then he says, continuing on, having your loins. So you stand clothed in the armor of God and having on the breastplate of righteousness and put your, on your feet the preparation. Preparation is important. I, I think too often we get um, beat in battles of life because we don't prepare ourselves. Sometimes we just assume that, you know, we're going to, you know, well, uh, if I hold my peace, the Lord is going to fight my battle. Well, he told you to resist. He said, you submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. So if you don't resist him, he don't flee. Amen. Amen. He told us to bind and loose. If you don't do that, that don't happen. Amen. We're in the promised land now. So just like the nation of Israel in the promised land, God said, everywhere the sole of your feet tread. He said, I've given it to you. But he didn't fight the Philistines and the Amorites and the Hittites for them. They had to do it. But God gave them the land. That's how you and I are. Even though God has given us certain things, if we don't use our God-given privileges, our God-given authority, if we don't use the weapons that God has given us, God is not going to do that for you. He said that we are to put on the armor of God. That you and I are to shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel to be a witness. He told us to take the shield of faith. And so if you don't use your faith, it don't work. Amen. Amen. And if you don't quench the fiery darts, they don't get quenched. Because he put that in our domain, our responsibility, to use what he has given us so that we could win the battles of our day. Amen. And then he said that um, in where we're at today, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. We're only going to look at the helmet of salvation today because this is so important. But I do want to emphasize that no soldier goes to battle without their headgear. I mean, even in sports, amen, you don't go out on the football um, field without your helmet. That's crucial, isn't it? You know, you know, hockey players don't play hockey without a helmet. Amen. Even baseball players, amen, you don't get up on the betters, uh, you don't get ready to bet and come in there to, you know, usually, usually they have a helmet on that has one side, you know, uh, really covered because if you get hit in the head with the ball, that could be injurious. That could be serious. In other words, you're not fully dressed until you put the helmet on. For you and I, it's the helmet of salvation. Let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we pray, God, that you would cause your word to come alive in us. That today, God, we're not only here, but we'll be able to do. Give us a revelation and understanding of what your word speaks to us. And God, give us the power through the Holy Spirit to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And take the helmet of salvation. Hallelujah. You know, in Philippians 4, verse 1, the apostle tells us to stand fast. Um, some commentaries say that maybe that should have been part of um, Ephesians, but uh, because it was a scroll, but no matter. And the Bible says here, therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my crown and joy, so stand fast in the Lord. Amen. In other words, that encouragement to stand and having done all to stand runs throughout the writings of Paul. You and I as Christians are not called to quit. See, the pressure comes our way to throw in the towel, to give up. No, 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 no. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. We're to keep on standing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So in this day and age, amen, we don't quit. We're going to stand and we're going to occupy till he comes in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. And so when he says, and take the helmet then, the assumption is that if I'm saved, I got the helmet on. Well, you are saved, amen. But he's talking about how, how to use the knowledge of your salvation to your advantage because, you know, the devil never told me that I wasn't saved until I got saved. You know, before I got saved, he always told me, you're all right. You got all the time in the world. No need to go through all that now. You know, the whole time he was ho hoping to take me out before I got saved so I'd be separated from Jesus for eternity in hell. Amen. Well, thank God that you got saved. Amen. And then, then we need to learn how to use this helmet called the helmet of salvation and hold our ground in Jesus' name. 
Every piece of this armor as we read it, and one of the reasons why we read these texts every week is because we're told to take, we're told to put, we're to, to, told to have all of it on, the whole armor of God. And so we want to have everything that God has promised you and I so we can stand in this day in Jesus' name. Uh, so we need every piece. And, um, and see, Paul is talking to Christians already. He's not talking to unsaved folk. He's telling Christians, put on the armor of God. So that means you and I as believers, we can be partially clothed. You know, the things that God has in this world for you and I, they're not automatic. Amen. We need to go get it. We need to be a little aggressive in our faith. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the valid take it by force. So if you sit back and wait, if it's for me, I have it. Amen. You will keep sitting and won't get it. Amen. You need to pursue God's kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to go after the things of God and we need to get aggressive about it more so in this day. Everything is amped up right now but the church. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Everything's out the closet right now except the believer. Amen. It's time for us to come out the closet with our armor on. And if the darts come in our way and they persecute us for our faith, if they say you can't use the name of Jesus, shout Jesus. Amen. In other words, we've got to be willing to stand and then use the shield of faith to quench the darts, the accusations, the lies, the slander, the names that they'll call you and, and sling your way. Stand and resist it in Jesus' name. Amen. Even realize that the Bible says all that will live godly in Christ Jesus says suffer what? Persecution. So uh, we should expect that the world don't like us. He said marvel not if the world hate you. Before it hated you, they hated me. Amen. So if you're of the Lord, the world is not going to like you. And so they're going to label us intolerant. And they're going to call you bigoted. And simply because you don't go along with their agenda and their program. They're going to call you narrow-minded because you believe there's only one way to get saved. Well, I do. And so I wear the badge being narrow-minded proudly. Amen. Amen. Why? Because Jesus said it's the broad way that leads to destruction and that it's the narrow road that leads to life everlasting. Amen. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. That's narrow. So I am a narrow-minded If you believe that, you're narrow-minded too. So don't get intimidated if they call you the names. Praise God, amen. That's a, we should rejoice in that. Amen. amen. If they call us intolerant, no, we're not intolerant. They're intolerant. The world calls us what they are to box us in so we won't speak out. Amen. You know, we are tolerant. We accept everybody. We love everybody. Amen. We're called to pray for everyone. It's them that say, if you don't go, go my way and go, go along with my agenda, then you're intolerant. They're tolerant of everything except us. And that's why they label you, call you names, try and confuse us. But we're not falling for the game. We're going to stand. Amen. And we're going to quench the fiery darts and not be intimidated and not get ashamed of my faith. Amen. You know, Paul told Timothy, don't be ashamed of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's what the world wants you and I. Well, I can't say that. He remixed in religion with politics. Listen, you a believer. Everything about us should relate to Christ. Amen. I don't have to mix religion with politics because I'm not practicing religion. I got a relationship with Jesus. And if you save, you do too. Amen. And so for you and I, everything is spiritual. And it should be Christ first. Amen. And then everything else after that in the order of importance. And that means that you and I are first a Christian. You know, the world is wrestling with identity right now, isn't it? Well, I identify as. Amen. Well, I'm a Christian. I identify as a Christian. Jesus is my Savior. I'm born of his spirit. Well, if they don't like that, tough. I believe Paul's telling the church to get a backbone. Amen. And stand. Amen. And so we have to stand. They say, say if a person won't stand for something, they'll fall for anything. So if we're going to stand in this last day as we're encouraged to, we got to put on the clothing that God has given us and let it do its work for us. Amen. 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 He said it's the armor of God. It's not yours. 
And if we strap it on right, then to the enemy, we mm, that's why they called them Christians, wasn't it? Amen. They first were called Christians of Antioch because we hate them. They love us back. Amen. We persecute them, and they respond back in the love of God. And eventually, they changed the Roman Empire. Why? Because they stood, stood on the things of God, as you and I are to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so this helmet of salvation, we're going to look at this just a little bit, amen, because it's not automatic, and you and I as be believers need to take it up. That word take means receive it. Amen. Salvation means deliverance from temporary evil. It's a Greek word called soteria. It means safety. See, our safety is in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Our deliverance in, is in Jesus. Amen. And so he's our king and he's our Lord and he's, our, he, he's soon to return. And so there's a, a word here that in salvation it means that he's our deliverer from temporary evil. See, God is our keeper. And those of us that know Jesus need to understand that part of our salvation is that God will look out for you and I, his people, and protect us. But I also believe there's an element of hope that the apostle is uh, talking to in this as well. Uh, because you'll find in other places in the scripture, amen, that uh, he'll tell you to take on the helmet of the hope of your salvation. We'll, we'll read that in just a little bit. But we need to know that... Um, that we receive the deliverance that God has provided for you and I, and it's called the helmet of salvation. And that means that you and I first, the first thing, the most important thing in our lives, no matter who you are, is to settle the issue, where do I go when I die? Amen? You know, we have to settle that. Because sometimes Christians may get saved, but they allow the fiery darts, the doubts. Um, well, you know, you the devil, play, he plays a, a smart game. He has a lot of experience, you know, tricking us. And, and so every thought, that's why we have to watch our thought life. Every thought that comes into your mind is not a thought from God. So if a negative thought is coming your way, amen, you've got to discern where it's coming from. Amen. When it's coming to belittle you, to put you down, you need to identify it and then deal with it. Amen. The devil will try and take away the assurance of your salvation. And like I said a moment ago, he never told you you weren't saved until after you got saved. But if you allow the doubt to get in, even a Christian can doubt their salvation. So you need to settle the issue. Are you secure in the knowledge that you're saved? Amen. You need to make sure of that. Amen. Because that gives you boldness and it anchors you in your mind and in your soul. And so you need the assurance of your salvation. Well, where do you get that, Pastor? You get it from the Word of God. So, so you put on the assurance that you're saved. Amen. You know, Romans 10, verse 13, one of my favorite verses. I don't went away from where I was planning to go, but Romans 10, 13 says that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you believed in Jesus, that he died for you, and you call on him, asking him to save you, he responded. He was waiting on that. And if you look at that scripture, it's an encouragement for you and I to believe that when I called, he saved. Whosoever calls. Somebody say, whosoever. Whosoever is I in you. Amen. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord to save them, they are saved. And so you use the word of God to push back that doubt that the devil brings. And this is how you begin to work the helmet of salvation. You use the word of God. I receive them as my Lord and Savior. And then you need to be assured that, you know, 2 Timothy 1.12 says that God will keep what you commit to him. If you gave in your life, he's able to keep you. Amen. Amen. See, sometimes if we just trust our ability to keep us in Christ, you know, we're going to have some issues. Amen. Amen. You know, but he will keep you. He will keep you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, so when we do like Nicodemus did, Jesus challenged him and said, you know, you must be born again. You know, once he understood, you know, Jesus uh, later, well, Nicodemus, I believe, was one of the company of priests that was saved after the resurrection. Matter of fact, he showed up to embalm Jesus, didn't he? Amen. Because he caught the understanding that he needed to be born from above, as the Lord said. And when you and I give our lives to Jesus, he does the same thing for you and I. And then he'll keep us. So this is how you battle the doubts about your salvation. 
with the promises, with the, sure, the, the foundation of God's word. 2 Timothy 1.12 is one. 2 Thessalonians 5.8 says this, But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. The hope of salvation. See, this helmet of salvation should put in you and me a hope. And hope simply means a favorable expectation of a pleasurable outcome. Amen. An anticipation to know that based on the promise of the word of God, someday I will be with my Savior. And so no matter what attacks come my way, you know, what weapons the enemy uses against me, the doubts, the accusations, the slanders, I have a hope that, hey, I'm on my way to be with my king. And so I'm not going to let the world beat me down and cause me to turn around, amen, because I'm on a journey, amen. And I've been born again, and I'm going to stay the course in Jesus' name. That word, hope, anticipation, amen, and expectation, amen, a confidence that is in you and I, an assurance of salvation. See, that's why I said a moment ago, we need to settle the issue of our eternal destiny. And that's why if you're not saved, you need to get saved. If you doubt your salvation, you need to pray and ask for that assurance. And you base it not on how you feel. Amen. Well, I don't feel like I'm saved. Well, I thank God that we are not saved by feelings. We are saved by grace through faith. Amen. Amen. I don't feel saved. Oh, what does it mean to feel saved? See, if the devil can keep you and I in the area where we're looking for a feeling, and he can always trip us up. I'm born again through faith, and he gave me his spirit, and his spirit gives me the assurance by wherewith I can cry, I have a father. I have a father in heaven. I have an elder brother, Jesus Christ. I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ now. And so I have to base my foundation of salvation not on feelings, but on the faith that I have in the promise and the word of God. And that becomes what Hebrews 6.19 says is an anchor that's, that kind of keeps me planted, keeps me from drifting. And see, we got a lot of Christians drifting today. Why? Because they hadn't settled the issue. You know, well, you know, I, I got saved, but I don't really, you know, look, if you're either saved or you're not. Well, are you saved? I'm hoping, hoping and getting you saved, faith. Isn't that what Ephesians 2.8 says? It is by grace that you are saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God and not of works. Well, I'm working on it. If somebody says I'm working on getting right with God, they need to get saved. Amen. Amen. Or they really misunderstand that, you know, you don't work to get saved. You work for God after you get saved. Amen. Amen. And that's Ephesians 2.10. So we're saved unto good works. Works don't save, but saved Christians are the work. Amen? And sometimes people get that cart before the horse, and they get twisted up. You and I are called to bring clarity into their life. So we take the helmet of salvation, and we settle the issue. I was one of those that wrestled for a, a long time. Was I really saved or not? You know, based on how I was taught wrongly and I remember one time I was in church, and every time after I first got saved, this was in 1979. You know, we all start out as babies, don't we? And, um, you know, nothing wrong with that. We ought to grow up, though. But I remember I was looking for a feeling. <laughs> and, uh, and so I remember one night, you know, I'm going through these battles. At that point, I don't have any other Christian friends at that point, you know. And so I'm kind of out there by myself and just kind of floundering around. Anybody else can identify with that? And, you know, like a, a little bird, you just open your mouth, people put stuff in it. And so I got exposed to a lot of teaching that was not good. And that's why I'm such a stickler now for the word of God. But I remember I went to a service one night, and I'm already wondering because the devil's saying, you know, you know, you thought this. If you were a Christian, you, had, you wouldn't have thought that. Any of that ever happened to y'all before? He'll throw you the thought, and you bad the thought, then he'll tell you if you thought that, you're not saved. And I'm a new Christian. I don't know how to cast that thought down. I don't know how to resist it. And so I'm in church this night, and there's an altar call, and we all went down to the altar, and I'm down there, and I'm praying. And, um, and then the preacher said, you know, salvation is like this. It's like you're flying a kite, and that kite can get so high, you know. I can't do the inflection like he did, but that you can't see it. 
but every so often you can feel it tug because of the wind. He said, you ought to feel saved. And then that thing hit me. Well, I don't know what the feel saved is, and I came on the condemnation. That's why I thank God for the word of God. I got saved by faith. Amen. It is good. We have good feelings because we are saved. But the feelings don't save us. Amen. Because, you know, say, you know, and there are days where you might feel like they, they might call it you got up on the wrong side of the bed, but you don't really feel like much of a Christian all the time. <laughs> if you based it on how you felt every day, the devil's going to win that battle. Yeah. See, we got to settle the issue, amen, that when you gave your life, he said, I know who is man. And he says, he, Paul said, I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed to him. And then I realized I committed my life to Jesus. It is he that is able to keep me. I can't keep myself. Then he made it even more strong in John chapter 10, verse 28 and 29. I'm going to read that. Amen. Notice what Jesus said. And then it began to dawn on me. Yeah, I, I, Lord, I thank you that I'm, I'm saved. I finally got my helmet on straight. <laughs> Because before I was flipping about by feelings. And if the devil can keep us in the area or we're moved by feelings, he'll win the battle every day. And notice here what Jesus said. And he says, and I give unto them eternal life, everlasting life, and they shall never perish. Oh, that's a promise in me. Not based on me, but based on what he said. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now, I could almost see in my man's eye the hand of God, amen, of uh, the Lord Jesus at this point. You know, I'm in his hand. We used to sing that song, he got the whole world in his hand. No, he has you and I in his hands. Amen. But then he made it even more locked down where I realized that the enemy can't pluck me out of the hand of God. Amen. And then he said in verse 29, My father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Look at your hand for a minute. Amen. Here's, it, here's your hand, and just imagine you in it. Jesus got you in his hand, and then he says that, you know, my father has his hands on you as well. Amen. Saints, if we stay with Jesus, you're locked in. Don't let the devil talk you out of the assurance of your salvation. See, you're wearing the helmet of salvation now. No man can pluck you out. Now you got the hand of Jesus and the hand of God. Brother, that's why we are sealed, the Bible says, with the Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. We are locked in. Amen. Praise God. And we have an assurance that our salvation is set. Amen. See, you have to get that assurance to have the helmet on right because the devil will try and get you to doubt that you ever got saved. Amen. If you learned anything, say amen. And that gives you and I a hope. Amen. Now I'm looking forward to something because I've settled the issue. I am saved. <laughs> Glory to God. And that becomes an anchor for my hope, my, my soul. It keeps me settled. When the storms of life come and go against me, man, I don't know why God allowed all of this. Well, we got to remember, it's not God that's causing the problems. The Bible says there's a thief out there. It seeks to kill, steal, and to destroy. Amen. Amen. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. Isn't that what the Bible says? But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And so it's not God that's bringing these things. It's because you were in the world, going in the direction of the world, but when you got saved, you made an about face and began to go toward God. And now the world is pushing back on you, trying to draw you back. Amen. 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 And you and I have to keep stepping. We got our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Don't stop walking and following the Lord because opposition came. A lot of Christians doubt whether God is with them, amen, based on how they feel. That's why you can't trust your feelings. Amen. I'm saved by faith. Amen. And so the world is not going to love me. Jesus mentioned it. John the Apostle mentioned it. Amen. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. Amen. See, we need to settle that. Amen. And too many Christians try and compromise to be accepted by the world. Let me re-say that. Too many preachers compromise hoping to gain worldly acceptance. Amen. If the world never loves us, amen, we should settle ourselves. 
It only matters that we're accepted of God. I'm in this world. I'm not of the world. They don't understand me. Jesus told Nicodemus, amen, it's like the wind. You feel it, but you don't see it. You see the effects. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. And what the world don't understand, they seek to destroy. And so Paul is saying, stand. Having done all, stand. Having on the armor of God. Having on this helmet of the knowledge of your salvation. Amen. That gives you a hope. Praise God. Amen. Uh, God is keeping you and I. Amen. Hallelujah. And what God is working in you and I, he's going to carry it all the way through. Amen. See, he is of power to keep you and I. The Bible says, according to the gospel. So you receive the knowledge of your salvation. Now, I'm going to look at, you remember we used to learn that there are certain things that are past tense, present tense, you know, in, in certain words. Well, think about that for a minute as it pertains to your salvation. Amen. You are saved if you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, that's past tense, isn't it? Amen. So you have been saved. Saved from what? The penalty of sin. Amen. So Jesus saved you and I. Amen. And that puts us in a position where Ephesians 2, as we quoted earlier, says, it is by that grace that you're saved through faith. Amen. Now, Paul went on to say, we are his workmanship, created in Christ unto good works. Amen. So your salvation is past tense, unless you get saved right now. Some point in your life, you got born again of the Spirit of God. Amen. And if you're here today and you need to get saved, now's as good a time as any. Amen. If you hear his voice, amen, don't, don't shut it down. Amen. Respond in faith. Call on Jesus to save you. Now, notice it's a past tense event. I remember the night I got saved. I remember what I was doing and what I was running from that night when I got saved. But that's in my past. That's past tense in my life. I look back at it, amen, and he saved me from the penalty of sin when I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Jesus said, he that liveth and believeth in me, in John eleven twenty six 26, shall never die. Believest thou this? At that point, I received what the Bible calls everlasting life. I was born again. My old man died. I was born anew of the Spirit of God. And if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creation. Old things have what? passed away, and behold, all things are new. That's in our past, isn't it? Amen. And so there's a past tense sense of our salvation. At that point, my uh, sin issue, amen, Jesus bore my sins, I received Jesus, and God received me because I received his son. Amen. And so now I am saved. Well, that's what the Bible calls being justified, justification. So justification by faith is the past tense of when you got saved. So Romans 5, 1, the apostle said, therefore, being justified by faith, we now have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And one of the evidences that you are saved is the peace of God came into your heart. I'm not afraid of eternity anymore. I know where I'm going. Amen. To be justified is a judicial term. And so you and I in the courts of God is where we were guilty of sin. You know, we were born in sin. We had no way to get right with God. Amen. And so God sent his son, Jesus Christ, who died in our place as our substitute. And when I received his son, Jesus, God received me. And the gavel came down in the court of law, justified, declared innocent. Not because of what we did, but because of whom we received, and that's Jesus. That's the past tense of your salvation. So if you're saved, that's a past tense. But there's a, a present day work that God is doing in you. Amen. And this is where people get confused concerning where the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. That doesn't mean that you work for your salvation. And that's where people get a little off base there. Amen. Because that's the present tense. Somebody say present tense. What do you mean when you say that then, Pastor? Amen. Well, that's you being delivered from the power of sin. You know, God is at work in us right now, working in us to both the will and to do his good pleasure. Amen. Every day, you and I as a believer, amen, are going through a process of being refined. I was born again, saved of the Spirit. 
the man I got this body that the Bible says sold on the sin. I got this man that needs to be renewed so I can get my thinking straight. You know, and as I read the word of God, as, as I sit under the word of God, as I apply the scriptures to my life, there's a cleansing effect of the word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit that happens in me, and it causes me to conform more and more to the image of Christ. That's sanctification. Amen. Amen. That's the present-day work of the Spirit of God in you. Amen. And that's what Philippians 2.12 is talking about. Where He reminds us there, beloved, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And so we're working daily to become more like Jesus. We're, we're setting ourselves apart for his glory more and more. And so that's a process in it. And that process won't stop until the Lord returns. But we have an assurance that, you know, he's working this out in our lives as we begin to, you know, some things that we did after we got saved when we were babies, you don't do anymore, Amen. hopefully. <laughs> you know, certain things begin to fall off us, doesn't it? As we begin to grow in the things of God, certain sins that we have uh, struggled with, we get victory over those as we grow in Christ. Amen. See, that's part of our progressive sanctification. We're working out our salvation. It began in our spirit, and now, now it's working its way out into our body, changing the way I think, changing the way I act, changing our language at times, changing our habits, amen. You know, there are changes that he begins to work out in us because his spirit is at work in us. And we're beginning to share some of the things of the world, so much so that people that see you after you've been saved a while, because, I, man, you're not like you used to be. What happened? Now you got a chance to witness to him. Amen. Why? Because they see the change that's occurring in your life. And that's part of him working out our salvation. That's part of me putting on the helmet and allowing that to change me day by day, um, moment by moment, as I conform more to seek after Jesus, to look more like Jesus, to act more like Jesus. And he's working that in us. Amen. And he don't stop working that in us. Amen. And so we have to trust him to do that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You work on it, but he's the one that's doing the work. Amen. And so I remember in Philippians chapter 1, another scripture that gave me assurance of my salvation. Now, it helps us when we're working with new Christians to get them stabilized as quick as we can. Because as soon as you get saved, the devil don't wait till you grow up to attack you. Well, he come right, at, right away because if he can stop you today, he, he won't have to deal with you down the road when you're stronger. And so that's why he bombards you with thoughts and begins to bring stuff in front of them, people trying to tempt them. Why? Well, to cause them to stumble, but don't stumble. Amen. Amen. Philippians 1.6, one of my favorite verses. It says, being confident of this very thing. Now, we're talking about the present tense. Somebody say present tense Amen. of your salvation. You have been saved and you are saved. He's setting you apart for his glory. Being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you. So when you got saved, he began a good work in you. But notice the next word says, he will perform it. That means he's going to continue refining it, working on you, working out these things, amen. And how long is he going to do it? Until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. And so we're, that's the daily work of us becoming sanctified, set apart for God. Amen. So we saw the past the tense of our salvation, getting saved. The present day work of salvation, becoming more like Jesus. And God is going to perform that in you and I. He's going to work it out until Jesus comes, which is the last part of our salvation. This is the wrap up. This is, is where our hope is. Because I know someday we'll be with Jesus. Amen. 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 That's the future tense of our salvation. Amen. But when is that? Because that gives me hope knowing that he's going to keep working on me until the Lord comes. Amen. So I got that hope. Man, it's tough. The world is dark right now. Amen. But my hope is not in this world. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, we see all the craziness going around in the political world. My hope is not in politics. Amen. Even though we can participate, amen, and use our influence if we know how to use it, amen, that's not where my hope is. Our hope is in the Lord, amen. It's the name of the Lord that is a strong tower. 
This is where the righteous run in and are saved, amen. And so we have to stay the course, amen. We shall be saved. Amen. That's the last part of our salvation. I've been saved. I'm working it out. I am in the process of being saved or sanctified. And then there's a point in history where it's all set up for eternity. Amen. That's the thing that we long for. It's what the Bible calls, amen, the thing that we're to comfort one another with. With those words, knowing that at some point, our King Jesus is soon to return. And that's when we'll be delivered from the presence of sin. Amen. See, we were delivered at salvation from the penalty. Amen. We received eternal life. Amen. We're delivered from the judgment of rejecting the Lord Jesus. Amen. He's working it out in a, you and I today to become more and more like our Savior. But the end goal is that we ultimately be just like him. What's 1 John 3, 2 say? When we see him, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. That's the last part of our salvation, though. Fullness of it, amen. Full circle, amen, where we're delivered from the presence of sin. At that point, our mortality puts on immortality. At that point, we'll be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. See, that's what I'm looking for now, amen. Jesus could return any time, and at that time, this body will be changed. And it'll become like unto his glorious body. Amen. And then I'm completely delivered from the presence of sin. Amen. Hallelujah. God has that in store for you and I. And so this is where my hope is. Amen. And so I'm clothed with the helmet of this hope of my salvation in Jesus' name. Because I know eventually, amen, that he's going to return. And at that moment, I'm going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Amen. At the last trump. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to be caught up in the air to meet him. And what's the Bible say at that point? So we shall ever be with the Lord. Well, that's where our salvation has taken us. Amen. Amen. And see, that gives me hope to walk through this world with all the stuff and all the opposition and all the, the things that come our way on a daily basis is because I know in the end, amen, you know, we're going to be with Jesus. You got to remind yourself, the shortest part of your existence is right here on earth. Amen. From the point of um, a believer, everything for us gets better. When we go to be with Jesus, better. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. Philippians 3 verse 20 says he's going to change this vowed body and it'll become like his glorious body. See, that's the fullness of our salvation. Amen. That's our absence in the body, being present with him at that point. Amen. But there's more. Amen. He's going to deliver us. Notice in Romans chapter 8, verse 23, if you learn anything, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. know about you, but I got myself stirred up. Glory to God. <laughs> amen. Praise God. Notice we're waiting for something. He says, and not only they, but ourselves also. Verse 22 says, all creation groan it and travail it in pain even unto now. All creation suffers from the sin of Adam. All the world, the, we can't imagine what the world was like before the fall because we've only seen it after the fall. Amen. And so all creation is suffering. Animals are suffering. They're getting eaten by other animals. Amen. Getting, that didn't happen before the fall of man. Amen. In the garden. Amen. There wasn't tornadoes and hurricanes. Amen. Until after the fall. There weren't earthquakes until afterward. Amen. All creation is groaning together in pain unto now. And not only they, but ourselves also. We're included in that. Amen. Because we are suffering from the effects of Adam's sin. Our bodies age. Amen. That's why we're going to get a new body. Amen. You know, we grow up and then we grow older and we pass on. Amen. All because of sin in the world. So ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, we ourselves grown within ourselves waiting. Somebody said waiting. I am waiting for something. What is it? He said to wit or to know the redemption of the body, for we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man see it, why doth he yet hope for? See, I don't see the end. I have an expectation of it. I know that the fullness of my salvation will be complete when Jesus comes. And in that moment, I'll be changed in a twinkling of an eye. And I'll forever be with him. And I'll get a new body. Amen. 
my mortality puts on immortality. He said, my corruption will be made incorruptible. At that moment when Jesus comes, that's, the, that's where my salvation is taking me. So I have a hope that the body I have now, 2.0, is going to be perfect Amen. when Jesus comes. It will no more be subject to sin. Amen. Why? Because he's going to take us away from the presence of sin. That's the fullness of our salvation there. And I put that on as a helmet of hope so that when I'm fighting these battles in the world, I don't despair. Amen. That's why if we look at what we're simply facing, we could lose hope. But for the soldier in Christ's army, we're not fighting just for the day. Amen. We're fighting in terms of our eternity. And so we look to the Lord's return. Amen. And it keeps us hopeful. That's why when persecution arises, Christians get stronger. Amen. Whenever the devil tries to wipe out us through persecution, the body of Christ grows. There's something about that pressure, amen. I pray we never experience it in this country, but, you know, uh, we probably will before Jesus comes if he tarries, amen. But we're not to be afraid of it, amen, because, you know, we begin to find out we're not living simply for the day, amen, and that gives you and I hope. And so Christians, you're soldiers, and if a soldier ha has no hope that he's going to win, they despair and quit. You and I should not. So we need to keep this helmet on knowing. Amen. Know where your salvation is taking you. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 17 says, And so you'll ever be with the Lord. Amen. That's where my salvation is taking me. So no matter what temporary battles I have, whether they're in my flesh, whether they're in my mind, whether it comes externally from other people, I know in whom I believe, and I know he is able to keep what I committed unto him. Have a hope. Amen. God wants his people to maintain a hope to anchor our soul. Amen. No matter what challenges come your way, and there be many and challenges still to come. Amen. But if we know who received, amen, we can continue to stay in fast. Amen. See, the Lord wants you and I encouraged today. Amen. I'm not giving up, not quitting, not backing up. Amen. Amen. You aren't either. Amen. Break your quitter in Jesus' name. Amen. See, a lot of people's love of Christ wax cold because of pressure, persecution. Colossians 2, 6 says, amen, as you have therefore received the Lord, the, uh, Christ Jesus, the Lord, you're saved. Amen. Then he says, walk in him. So as a Christian, then let's continue on in Christ Jesus, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as you've been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Amen. Keep going. Don't stop. Amen. No matter what pressure comes against you and I, amen, we don't live for ju just this world. We're living in light of our eternity. Amen. Keep walking. Don't give up in Jesus' name. Stand fast. Look at your name and tell him, stand fast. Amen. That's why Paul said, having done all, stand. And then he says, stand therefore. Amen. In other words, no retreat in this kingdom. Don't back up. Keep standing strong in Jesus' name. Dressed in the armor of God, walking in the authority that God has given you and I in Jesus' name. Overcoming the enemy, amen. Casting down his works against you. Don't give up in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't get off the battlefield. Amen. amen. You know, a lot of Christians tossing in the towel, not you. Amen. And if you see me get weak, you pull alongside and you provoke me to good works. Amen. You challenge, amen, one another to stay the course. Don't quit. But I feel so weak, amen. Well, that's why I'm here. Let's join ourselves together in faith. Amen. And if need be, I'll carry you. And if I need it, you carry me. But we're going to make it through this together in Jesus' name because we're going somewhere. And that's why we're to stand together in faith as believers in Jesus' name. But if you're going to keep the helmet of your hope on, you got to learn to do something that we'll get into on the next time. Really learn to use the sword of the Spirit. Amen. You know, all the thoughts in your mind don't come from the Lord. Amen. Just like they say, if a bird can fly over your head, but you don't let them build a nest. Amen. Amen. You know, you got to learn to deal with those reasonings, those thoughts that come your way. So that I believe this is why those two are tied together. And taking, amen, the, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And that's where we'll pick up at using the word of God as a weapon of your warfare
to repel the attacks of Satan in Jesus' name. And we're going to do it. We're not giving up. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He's coming back for what kind of church? A glorious church. Jesus isn't returning for a tail tucked between his legs, running, weak, decrepit church, but a glorious church. Amen. Amen. See, I believe this can still be the body of Christ, final hour. Why? Because we're still the light of the world. Amen. Amen. The darker it gets out there, the brighter you and I look. And the, what God is doing in our lives, the light that he placed in us through the gospel, amen, can be something to draw people to him. How do you make it? And you have the answer. Jesus. Amen. Amen. How do you stand when all these things are going on in the world right now? With all these stress and all the violence and all the manipulation that you see, it's, I'm anchored in the Lord. And the only way you're going to have the assurance I've got, you got to know the one I know. Amen. See, we got to be willing to stand, but point people to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep that helmet of salvation locked in so our head won't get battered by the darts and the blows that come our way. You know, headshots are dangerous, amen. I remember in boxing, when I used to like boxing, Muhammad Ali used to say, if I kill the head, the body would die. See, that was a strategy. Amen. And so he would punch. He wasn't giving the body shots. He was going at the head. Get the head, the body dies. Amen. Well, the enemy knows that. If he can get a man, amen, if he can get our faults, if he can get us to become discouraged because of what we see, amen, then he's halfway there to taking you and I, winning the battle against us. So use the helmet of God, the armor, amen, and protect yourself in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we pray, God, that as we've heard, we ask you to give us not just a hearing, God, we pray for the application, Lord, help us to clothe ourselves in a helmet of salvation. Matter of fact, if anyone is here right now that maybe had not been saved or you believe in God, but maybe you're saying today, Lord, I want to settle that issue of my eternal destiny right now. I've been hoping based on uh, may, maybe the way I was raised or, or baptized or what church I joined to get right with God. But today, Jesus, I realize that the salvation is in you. And, Lord, I'm willing to call on you and ask me, ask you to save me. Is there anyone right now, every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're here and you need to be saved, just shoot your hands up and we'll pray with you in the name of Jesus. Or maybe someone's here and you've given your life to the Lord, but the pressures, amen, have caused you to contemplate backing up and tossing in the towel and giving in because the weight of the opposition against you. And say, Lord God, I need to make my salvation sure. The Bible tells me to make my calling and my election sure. And Lord, I need to know that I'm saved. I, I believe, I hope, but I need to know, is there anyone in Jesus' name? If so, just raise your hand. We'd be glad to pray with you. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And Father God, in Jesus' name, we pray that you would keep us by your grace, keep us by your power. God, we pray that you would continue to build in us a hope, God, that would keep us stable and anchor our souls so that no matter what we see, no matter what we hear, no matter what comes through the media, no matter what comes through personal challenges, God, that our heart is fixed, trusted in you. God, we pray that you would bring stability, understanding to each and every life, that you would strengthen us with might by your spirit. And Father God, we give you the glory and the praise for it in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen.